joining us now to break down what may or may not happen if we go over this cliff is David Callahan. He's the editor of PolicyShop.net and co-founder of Demos, a public policy think tank. David, thanks for a few minutes. I appreciate it. Hey, good to be here. What's your sense? Do you think people are over or underplaying uh, what this place could look like January 1 if they don't get a deal done? Well, one thing to keep in mind is that we're not really going to go over a fiscal cliff. We're going to start to go down a fiscal slope. That's because the you know tax hikes, those spending cuts, they're going to kick in gradually. So it's not like uh, that, that big hole in the economy is just going to open up overnight. It will be a gradual, uh, uh, you know, kind of rolling down this slope. So it's it's not quite as dramatic as, as people are talking about. It's certainly nothing like that debt ceiling uh, debate that, that you'll recall. You know, we're trying to put a face in this for the general public who I think tunes this out to a certain degree as white noise and they say typical uh, exhibit A of the dysfunction of Washington. But put in human context uh, for the folks at home, some of the things that, and I agree with you, it's not a cliff, it's a slope, but Everybody gets impacted because of the sequester if they don't get a deal done. Um, and how some of the changes that the regular Americans might see in their yeah. paychecks or more importantly in their taxes and God forbid that uh, you're on unemployment insurance and you've hit that wall. Some of the things that everyday Americans may be surprised that are going to be a consequence if they don't get their act together. Well, one of the big things that's uh, likely to happen, regardless of whether they get a deal, is that that temporary payroll tax cut, 2% payroll tax cut that we've all been enjoying uh, over the past year, that's going to go away January 1st. And so uh, that a lot of people are going to feel that right away. And, you know, down in Washington, neither party is really talking about keeping that payroll tax or extending that payroll tax cut. So people are going to feel that bite for sure. If those Bush tax cuts uh, altogether go away, that if they can't reach a deal, if the Bush tax cuts lapse in their entirety, uh, then, then people will start to feel that as well. So we're talking about a pretty big financial bite, you know, a, a, a couple thousand dollars a year for the average uh, middle class household. Maybe you'd have better luck than me. I'm trying to explain to some folks who say, hey, listen, just work out the tax cut deal. Don't worry about the debt limit and all the rest. It'll take care of itself. Can you explain to people, uh, if they want their lawmakers to spend their times wisely, why us going through this rigmarole seemingly every three or four months here is not only just an utter waste of time, but it's the most self-defeatist, uh, anti-American self-interest policy we could imagine as best as you can. Could you put this in user-friendly English? Yeah, well, Rich, I mean, that's a, a you, you said it well yourself. This is kind of crazy. And look, I mean, the most important thing that the people down in Washington need to do is, is make sure that all those tax cuts don't just lapse on December 31st. They don't need to get a whole huge deal about the deficit. You know, everybody's saying, look, we need this big fiscal cliff deal that it has to engage in all this deficit reduction, you know, big grand bargain. None of that actually needs to happen. The only thing Congress really needs to do is deal with those, those tax cuts lapsing uh, December 31st. I mean, there's only really a couple of weeks here. It's, it's hard to figure out all the budgetary problems facing the United States in the next couple of weeks. Right, David Callahan, thank you so much. Good to be here, Rich.